and I would ask uh, Deputy Roisin Shortall of the Labour Party uh, to move the motion in relation to child benefit. The Deputy has uh, 40 minutes. Uh, thank you, Cahir. Uh, with the permission of the House, I'd like to share my time with uh, Deputy John Burton and Joanna Tuffy. Great. Thank you. Uh, Cahir, uh, the Minister for Finance announced in the April budget that child benefit would be means tested or taxed in the next budget. All he needed to do was to work out how to do it. Eight months on, he still hasn't managed to do that. Rather than accepting that he can't achieve savings the way he intended to do, he is still intent on achieving them anyway. Some ministers apparently favour a straight cut across the board. Others favour a three-band system. The only certain thing is that the government is intent on targeting families and children. The motion before us tonight seeks to call on the, the, the government to cut child benefit uh, seeks to call on the government not to cut child benefit in the forthcoming budget for a number of reasons. Firstly, cuts in child benefit uh, are not acceptable because family incomes have already been significantly cut in the last two budgets. We're also saying there should no, be no cut in child benefit because of the continuing high cost of raising children in Ireland, including the cost of childcare. Because there is no recognition of the cost of rearing children in the tax system. Because of the damaging effects that such cuts would have on the economy. And because any of the proposed changes would create poverty traps, create work disincentives and increase the risk of child poverty. Child benefit is a payment made to parents, usually the mother, in recognition of the significant extra costs associated uh, with rearing children in households that have young children in particular. It arose originally as compensation for and recognition of the high costs associated with rearing large families. In more recent years, it has developed as one of the most important social policy instruments because it provides protection against child poverty, but does not create poverty traps in doing so. Because it provides income support for children, regardless of their parents' means, their marital status or their work status. Because it provides a financial buffer for parents who leave the workforce in order to care for their children. And in the case of parents who remain in the workforce, it contributes significantly to the extremely high cost of childcare. It is precisely because it is such a key instrument of social policy, and precisely because it, it, it seeks to achieve so much, that child benefit is a relatively generous payment. It is a payment very much valued by women, often long after the payment has ceased because it fundamentally recognises the critical role that women play as mothers and carers. And for many women, it is the only direct payment which they receive. <coughs> it isn't good enough for the government to say that merely because the bill for child benefit is now up to 2.5 billion, that it has to be cut. You have to look at what child benefit is achieving and how cuts would adversely impact on thousands of families in this country. Child benefit has to be relatively generous because in Ireland there is now no other recognition of the cost of children either in the welfare system or in the tax system. And it has to be relatively generous because there is a complete lack of state supported services for children. In my constituency, as in many others, it costs €65 Euro to bring your child to the doctor. Childcare costs over, are over €1,000 per month for five days a week, over €700 Euro for three days a week. And while the cost of living has come down generally in the past 12 months, these two costs that impinge heavily on parents, childcare and doctor's visits, have remained at the same level and in some cases have actually increased. In other countries, parents can rely on affordable access to a doctor, access to publicly funded early childhood uh, education services, access to public childcare and a range of options for older children. Child benefit essentially 
in this country compensates parents for a lack of such investment in those critical services for children. Families with children also tend to have big mortgages. Huge numbers of families are already struggling to fund these mortgages. Even with reduced interest rates, because of job losses, reduced hours and pay cuts. It seems that the Cabinet has forgotten that families have already borne the brunt of severe cuts. The April budget shamelessly targeted families. It reduced mortgage interest relief. It halved the early childcare supplement and will abolish it from January. As a result of that budget, parents of young children will lose several thousand euro a year as well as taking pay cuts and increases in levies along with all other workers. Child benefit has already been cut for 18-year-olds, a decision which I believe will lead to a much higher rate of young people dropping out of school and college. There is no attention in government and little in the media given to the cumulative effect of the cuts over the last two budgets on family incomes. By my calculations, a single income couple with two children, with an income of 40,000 euro, not especially well off minister, lost 250 euro per month from the decisions in the April budget. This will increase to 330 euro per month from January when the full effects of, those, of that last budget uh, uh, take effect. That means that such a family will already have 80 euro less per week to spend before any changes in next week's budget. This is on top of the several dozen cuts, charges, taxes uh, and other increases for public service workers, pension levies uh, and so on, which were introduced in the October budget. Since April, a welfare de dependent family has lost 125 euro per month so far, and this will rise in January. Since April, a double income family with a combined income of 70,000 euro has lost 330 euro per month so far, and this too will rise from January. There are only so many times that you can go back to the well, Minister. One public sector worker contacted me yesterday expressing his dread at the prospect of the coming budget because along with the cuts he and his family have already suffered, the government has indicated that they will have to take a cut in pay and most likely in child benefit next week. That man is dreading next week's budget because as it is, he can barely survive. He can barely sustain the kind of cuts that he has suffered over the last two budgets and any further cuts to his family income will simply be unbearable for that family. And that situation is mirrored thousands of times over throughout the country. The bottom line is that child benefit has become an integral part of the family household budget. Parents depend on it to, pr to provide for their children and cutting it will cause extreme hardship in a great many cases. So when we look at what the response to child benefit has been and the urging by the government that it needs to be cut, what have the experts said? The ESRI, the McCarthy report, the Commission on Taxation and the Minister indeed with, in, in conjunction with officials in her department have all looked at reforming child benefit but none of them has come up with a practical and fair way of achieving savings. The ESRI couldn't work out how you could tax child benefit without huge legal and bureaucratic problems, so they simply opted to recommend a 20% across the board cut. That in my view is simply not good enough. It is obvious that a 20% cut places a far bigger burden on those on low incomes than those with greater means. There is no fairness in that, and in terms of child poverty, such a cut across the board could reverse much of the progress in tackling child poverty in recent years. The McCarthy report was even worse. As the Taunish admitted, there is no social policy in the McCarthy report. 
with equal disregard for its effects. It too advised a 20% cut across the board and the standardisation of rates without regard for their potential impact. Anyone could do that. It was silent on how this could be done in a workable way and where costs could, would not make it counterproductive. It was a similar story with the Commission on Taxation, who recommended the taxing of child benefit, but couldn't outline exactly how that would work. The Commission on Taxation said, child benefit should be taxable income. The taxing of child benefit should be benchmarked against alternatives, including means testing, to ascertain the most effective method of achieving the aims and, obje and objectives of the child benefit programme. If taxation is applied, we recommend the introduction of a child tax credit to offset the additional tax payable in respect of child benefit for those in the lower half of the income scale. In my opinion, Minister, all of these approaches were intellectually lazy and disregarded all available evidence on the, on the impact of across-the-board cuts on child poverty. In fairness to the Minister, her department looked at the issue in a bit more detail. On Frontline a few weeks ago, the Minister suggested that the government might favour a three-banded approach with no cuts for those on welfare or family income supplement, some cuts for those on low and middle incomes, and larger cuts for those on higher incomes. Now, I have no particular problem with the principles that the Minister outlined uh, in relation to that in relation to lower income families receiving more in child support than families with very high incomes. But wanting that and actually achieving it are two very different things. Firstly, the biggest advantage of the universal entitlement is that it creates no disincentive to work and no poverty trap. As soon as it's means tested, it will become a poverty trap. The concentration of child benefit on lower income groups would stigmatise the payment and create huge anomalies for any parent going from welfare to work. The welfare system is already riddled with poverty traps like rent and, mor and, and mortgage supplement and the rules on back to education allowance and back to work enterprise allowance. We don't need more anomalies, Minister. Secondly, it would also be an administrative nightmare. Already this year, the Revenue Commissioners have struggled to handle the mortgage interest relief changes and income levy changes. The government has no idea how much extra it will cost to assess entitlement. It hasn't enough staff to ensure job seekers have their application processed in time. So how on earth is it going to manage even more work? The Minister's proposal that high earners would declare themselves as such is just laughable. The wealthy have never declared their income for tax purposes. So why on earth does the minister expect them to change their ways now? Thirdly, relying on the family income supplement payment is wrought with difficulties. FIS continues to suffer from chronically low take-up rates. Only 25,000 families are currently in payment. In addition, it excludes the self-employed, workers with intermittent work permits and it doesn't factor uh, sorry with intermittent work patterns and it doesn't factor in costs such as childcare and mortgages there is an alternative minister what is so disappointing is that there are many other revenue raising options available to the government but you seem to refuse to consider them the minister the minister, minister the government in my view has a duty to find savings where and how it can. The Labour Party accepts that €4 billion Euro of adjustments are required this year. But the government must also pursue policies that will have the least impact on the economy and on jobs. Cutting back on child benefit is one of the most deflationary things you can do. It will lead to further job losses in creches and in retail. It will take hundreds of millions of euro out of the domestic economy at a time when the economy needs a stimulus. The state spends about 2 billion euro a year in unnecessary tax subsidies. About 600 million euro goes on rent relief, uh, on re relief of rental income for landlords. 400 million on property reliefs, 
and several hundred million on various forms of pension relief for the very wealthy. It is incredible that the government can so easily overlook these areas when forming a budget for 2010, especially when cutting back on these is likely to be far less deflationary than cutting child benefit. Thank you. If the minister is really interested in child benefit going to the better off, the fair interested in ensuring that child benefit doesn't go to the better off disproportionately. The fairest and most practical way to make savings is not to have three bands of child benefit, to have, but to have three bands of income tax. Various reports suggest that the government is looking to save over 300 million euro from cutting back on child benefit. The government could raise just as much money by increasing income tax on the balance of single incomes that exceeds €100,000. That way families are not specifically targeted and low and middle income groups are excluded. The revenue commissioners estimate that such a uh, change would yield about €355 million. Euro. I cannot understand the government's approach on this. Why is it so afraid of taxing the better off and yet so intent on cutting child benefit? In a few minutes, the minister will stand up and tell us that she doesn't have any choice in the matter. Savings have to be made from the social welfare budget, but they don't, minister. For a start, the reason why the social welfare bill is so high is not that welfare is too generous. It's because there, have been such, there has been such an increase in the numbers of people unemployed. The patently obvious way to reduce the social welfare bill is to get people back to work and to safeguard jobs. The government has utterly failed to do that. Secondly, the public, while understanding the need for a difficult budget, will simply not tolerate the government targeting the easy option of social welfare while refusing to cut corporate welfare. Fairness demands that cuts must start at the top. Responsibility demands that the government must tackle the budgetary situation on that basis and that some element of consensus must be achieved. If the combined efforts and collective intellectual weight of the ESRI and Board SNP, the Commission on Taxation and your Department Minister cannot come up with a workable, not to mind fair way of cutting the child benefit bill, then you Minister are unlikely to be able to do that in the next seven days. The Labour Party is suggesting having three rates of tax rather than three rates of child benefit. By doing that, it avoids creating new poverty traps. It doesn't hit families. It targets savings from the better off. It would have public support and it actually achieves greater savings for the Exchequer. I would challenge you, Minister, tonight to engage in an honest debate on this issue to give us your views on the Labour Party proposals, to tell us why it is you are not prepared to target the better off, and why it is that you seem intent on targeting children and families. I challenge you, Minister, to do that here tonight.